This is Eye on Health. Delving into your overall well-being. With Arab Health. On Dubai Eye 103.8. I'm Helen Farmer and this is Dubai Eye 103.8. You are listening to Eye on Health. Brought to you by Arab Health and MedLab Middle East. We're marking World Diabetes Day on today's show with both an expert endocrinologist and looking at gestational diabetes too. With such high rates in the Middle East, what can we do about prevention, detection and, of course, treatment? Speaking first to Dr Ashwin Prankajashan, the specialist endocrinologist at NMC Royal Hospital. Fantastic to have you with us on Eye on Health here on Dubai i 103.8. I'm Helen Farmer and we are introducing you to some of Dubai's most in-demand doctors and touching on some topics that perhaps you might not be affected by, but I'm pretty sure someone you know will. Diabetes this week was, of course, World Diabetes Day earlier this week and many refer to it as the silent killer. It can just sneak up on you. Here in the UAE, it's estimated that as many one in five people have the condition with that number expected to double by 2040. So what can we do about it, whether it's prevention, treatment and management? Joining us now is Dr. Ashwin Pankajashan, a specialist endocrinologist at NMC Royal Hospital. Ashwin, thank you so much for being with us. Really do appreciate your time at what I'm sure is a very busy time of year. Um, I'd love before we get into the do's and don'ts, the technicalities, the medications, to really get a bit of an understanding for those of us who haven't got decades of experience in the medical field of what diabetes actually is, what happens or doesn't happen in the body. Diabetes is one of the most common conditions we see. Um, Me being an endocrinologist, we are dealing with hormonal disorders. One of the most common things we deal with is diabetes. So what happens is that there is a defect in the way body handles the glucose. And what happened is that, as a matter of fact, the blood sugar level, if we measure it, it is going higher. That's what happened in diabetes. So So it's a body's inability to regulate and respond? Yes. Okay. Inability to utilize glucose properly. And as a result, the glucose starts going up in the blood. So there's type 1 and type 2 diabetes, Uh and I'm still not 100% clear Uh on the differences between those. Yeah. So before going on to that, we'll look at what is the main defect in diabetes. So what happened is that the main hormone controlling diabetes is insulin. Insulin is a hormone which is produced by the pancreas. So what it does is that it makes the body to utilize the glucose. So from going from the blood to inside the cell, for the cell to use glucose, insulin is needed. So diabetes is a condition where either the insulin production is less or the insulin effect is less. Okay. Insulin effect being less is called insulin resistance. So type 2 diabetes is when there is both these problems. The insulin production is less. At the same time, insulin effect is also less. And one of the things is that one of the things that reduce the insulin effect is obesity. As people gain their weight, the insulin becomes less and less effective and uh, the chance for diabetes keeps on increasing. So that's the thing that is there in type 2 diabetes. So both are affected. But if you go to type 1 diabetes, it is a different sort of etiology. So what happened is that the pancreas stops producing insulin altogether. So there is literally zero insulin. And so this type of diabetes, the type 1 diabetes, occur in the children mostly. But we do have adults having type 1 diabetes. But the thing is, there is zero insulin production. So these patients have to be on insulin from day one. And they can't even miss even one or two doses of insulin. They can't miss in a day. They mostly are on four times insulin a day, which makes it difficult for them to take but they need insulin all the time and can't miss it. I would like to go back to type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. As we said, this is unfortunately very prevalent in Mm -hmm. the region. And we can point to obesity. We know as the Mm -hmm. UAE, it's it's Mm -hmm. an overweight nation. Uh, We can point to that sedentary lifestyle, the buckets Mm -hmm. of chicken, the late late night uh, iced coffees and all the rest of it. But what do we know about the genetic component as well, or either Mm -hmm. lifestyle factors outside of diet and exercise? Now, if both parents are having diabetes, the risk is going to around 60 to 70 percent. So you have to be really careful Mm -hmm. if both parents have diabetes and you have to take the preventive steps really early. So genetics is an important factor. But what we see more and more in our practice in Dubai, I've been in Dubai for five years. So what I see is that nobody with without any family history, no one in the family having diabetes, but they are getting diabetes pretty young in 20s, 30s and lifestyle and uh, diet lack of exercise, poor sleep, spending a lot of time in the car, not having time to exercise, being exhausted when they come back. 
home that uh, they can't even think of exercise just go back to bed so <laughs> I'm laughing because that sounds like me yeah. um, but, but, but we are also a very hard working uh-huh. part of the world what about yeah. that stress factor so what happens is that the, uh, when you are stressed your body produces more cortisol that's a stress hormone the cortisol also reduces the effect of insulin so it worsens the insulin resistance so when you are someone is chronically stressed that can be an additional factor that actually leads to uh, type 2 diabetes also apart from being uh, inactive being obese stress also makes the things uh, worse actually let's talk signs and symptoms what uh-huh. are some of the ways it can manifest physically mm-hmm. and mentally that might bring someone mm-hmm. to your clinic diabetes is a silent disease more often than not so many of the people actually might not know that they have diabetes so the first thing to understand is that there are not symptoms all the time mm-hmm. only in a subset of the patients there are going to be symptoms so it's very important to start screening for diabetes if you have family history of diabetes if someone in the family has diabetes or anybody here above 30 of age actually should have a sugar checkup and if it's coming normal they may reduce it to once in 3 years or something like that if it is coming borderline they have to check it regularly so that's the thing to understand that it's not always with symptoms but when the symptoms come the usual thing is that patients have weight loss they feel tired all the time they can have lot of urination so they wake up uh, many times in the night to pass urine and they drink a lot of water because they are thirsty all the time so being thirsty passing lot of urine waking up in the night to pass that we see such patients uh, quite a lot and also once in a while during the diabetes day people have screening and then they uh, come to know like uh, as a surprise that uh, they have diabetes that's also very common and that, just to demystify that screening a little bit is it yeah. as simple as a blood test yeah it's a simple thing uh, like uh, easiest way is to even check a glucometer thing which actually takes literally one or two seconds so which can be done in the clinic i mean that's the most not the most accurate but it's it's fair enough i mean if you're doing a fasting like you're fasting and you can check a, a blood test but there is another blood test called 3 month average hba1c that shows your sugar over the last 3 months so that test can be done and it's a good way to screen for diabetes as well as your fasting and two or after food levels that is there so, so i've read that men are mm-hmm. affected perhaps more often yeah. than women why is that and how can it affect men mm-hmm. in particular so what is seen is that uh, the men seems to have diabetes about twice as common as wow, females wow that's significant in most part of the world it is like that the men tend to have more visceral fat visceral fat is fat in the liver so around Whereas, around the internal organs yes, around the internal organs uh, the fat is more in the if you take the male that is more common but if you take females it is a peripheral fat it might be in the thigh might be on the abdomen but in the liver fat is not as high as in men okay. and it is a liver fat which is responsible for this insulin resistance if you take some two a men with obesity and a female with obesity what is that the men is usually more unhealthy as compared to the female with the same level of obesity actually So men have that fat in a more of a dangerous yes. place when it comes to diabetes. Yes. Um in some ways when people come to your clinic with mm-hmm. these symptoms mm-hmm. it's a bit of a happy ending because they get mm-hmm. a treatment plan and hopefully yep. they are yep. mindful and responsible mm-hmm. enough to follow that. Yeah. If someone leaves their diabetes unchecked or they're mm-hmm. unaware of mm-hmm. the condition they might be living with what can that lead to doctor? Mm-hmm. It's very important that they accept that they have diabetes. So what happened mostly is people might uh, come for follow up like for the first two months things are good and then they just they just stopped everything they stop follow up and then they don't do anything about it till the next symptom comes that's the most common thing seen with the younger population so that is an absolute no and the main stay of treatment in diabetes is lifestyle and exercise you can give all the medicines but if you are eating everything and if no, no control on that nothing is going to control the sugar we are going to keep on increasing the medication that's not going to work uh, the, on an average it's been found that anybody who walks at least 7000 step per day lives much longer than someone who does less than that but when it comes to diabetes what we recommend is around 10000 step per day or 150 minutes per week of physical activity something like brisk walking and if it is jogging or running you need maybe 75 to 150 minutes So that's what is needed per week. It's not a big ask, but still people find it difficult to do that. I think there's a bit of a misconception about exercise that it has to be, you know, uh-huh. you've got to be doing CrossFit five times a week. It's uh-huh. it's about raising that activity level in a yes. way that feels accessible yeah. and not intimidating because uh-huh. that's yes. how you build on that fitness. Yes, yes. So so anything would be for example, anything like uh, 
pushing a heavy furniture even would be actually moderate level exercise mm-hmm. it will be similar to uh, is a brisk walking and uh, so our daily activity just even if you move around make sure that you for us we try to walk in between seeing patients we try to <laughs> not always possible doctor what about reversing mm-hmm. diabetes uh-huh. is it possible or uh-huh. is this something once you get that diagnosis it's it's disease management for life yes, so it's possible to reverse diabetes with weight loss weight loss means you are actually having a healthy diet having healthy diet exercise eventually can lead to weight loss so if someone loses around 5% of their body weight uh their diabetes can improve quite a lot mm-hmm. and if they lose around 10% of their body weight for example a 90 kilo person if they lose 9 kilos 100 kg person lose 10 kilos uh what happen is that the insulin resistance goes away so what happen is that the liver fat comes down uh the body fat comes down insulin resistance comes down your insulin is more effective and your sugars might be controlled without any medication so it is possible to reverse diabetes with a healthy lifestyle Dr. Asman, thank you so much for your time. It sounds strange to say happy World Diabetes Day, but uh, I know it's a very big focus for you there at NMC. And uh, of course, all the very best to you and your patients. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Helen, for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Eye on Health with Arab Health on Dubai Eye 103.8.